And when we put this in, like I like to put this just underneath the elbows. Yes. To start with, you like that? Yep. So I'm kind of right in here. Yep. Just and, under the creases and like the um, in the pockets of your arms. Okay. Even or just under it. And the whole point of this, which I think is obvious, but is to keep my elbows together, mm -hmm. right? So if I feel like I'm trying to squeeze them together, I'm unable to do it. Let me start with this to start to get a feel. Definitely. And what do we like here, Steve? If someone's starting with this, am I starting with hitting? Oh, I'm hitting, I'm hitting 50%. And I'm, if, if you have a grass driving range, I would try to take divots every time. So okay. I'd be trying to hit the ground. And if, if not, then you have a mat, just try to hit the mat. And the more that you keep making these little swings and doing what you're doing, um, each time you hit the ground, you're telling your brain something. So you're, you're learning and getting positive feedback with having the training aid in there and continue to keep touching the ground. Okay. So if you're, like we said earlier, if you're touching the ground, if the club's hitting the ground, we know that your arms are staying stretched out and that radius is staying like locked in. So I got the ball in. Yeah, I'll just pop it out. Do exactly what you just did in your practice. Okay, a little swings. half ones hit the ground. Yeah. Perfect. That would be, that's like ideal how to practice it. Okay, Steve, in today's video, we're talking about a drill for the golfers to do that will finally help keep their arms straight, yep. right? We've talked in several videos about the importance of keeping yep. the arms straight and squeezing the elbows together. And in this video, I wanna kind of do three things for them. I'd like to just briefly review the squeezing the elbows together concept. Mm -hmm. And then for the golfers who come back, as some of them will say, hey, Eric, I try squeezing my elbows together. I try keeping my arms straight. I know I'm supposed to do it. Yep. I just, I can't get myself to do it. Yep. I think there's two things in this video that we want to go through that can help them. Number one is a training aid that they can use or training aid options. So I think giving them some kind of feedback. Definitely. Yep. And then and then correlating the correct body motions that would go along with it. So let's let's hit those three things. Yep. So uh, let's just do a brief overview of the elbows staying closer together, right? Now, like from a baseline level, why do we want to keep the arms straight in the swing? Like what's what, what's the outcome we're looking for there? Well, we're trying to keep the keep the radius constant so that it makes it easier to touch the ground, control where this club hits the ground. So if you're if you're setting up, yeah, you do your setup, the butt of the club, right? The butt of the club to say your sternum. Let's say roughly it's about 20 inches in that general area, and if we can go ahead and swing back, do like a half swing. And it's still roughly about you know 20 inches and then from swing. here to here yep from the okay. butt of the club to like your sternum and then swing through and if we can keep that 20 inches kind of locked in throughout the time and space of a swing it makes it easier to control where that club's going to touch the ground if that okay. thing <laughs> is bending all around if i'm going 20 19 18 10 5, yeah this way yeah it's very chaotic so like the simple version is uh contact yes hit the ball solid yep goal number one and i would i would also say two um because we're talking about the radius and the arm straight, hitting the ground. Hitting the ground. You know, if, if, if a player, like you just mentioned, that someone comes back, is taking some lessons from us and they can't do it well, are you hitting the ground? Yeah. That's the telling sign. Even if you're hitting it fat, even if you're hitting it fat, at least you're hitting the ground. So that's telling you the radius is, is staying locked in there. Now okay. you can be hitting behind for another reason, but use the feedback what the ball's doing. Am I hitting the ground? Am I taking a divot? If you are, your arms are straight. If you're not, you know, something's happening with the radius fluctuating through the swing. I like that. So the arm straight to keep the radius, to hit the ground and hit the ball solid, low point control. Correct. Now we've talked about the elbow piece in the past, but let's give kind of a 60 second review of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of if I want to keep my, my radius and the elbow or the uh, arm straighter, I know it starts with the setup, right? Yep. So at the setup position to be able to keep my arm straighter, I don't want my elbows to be far apart with yeah, the elbows pointed. Elbows close together pockets of the arms facing out towards the camera pointed this way yes okay so elbows start close with the pockets pointed away correct 
And then as I'm making my swing, as I'm going in motion, as I'm keeping this butt of the club the same distance away, right, as our goal, yep. the overall sensation would be that those elbows, I'm trying to keep the same distance I started? Yeah, so let's do that again. So let's say the elbows rough, say eight to 10 inches apart, right, roughly. If we had, uh, you wanna put the training aid in on, on this let's one? Let's wait, let's wait okay. a little bit, yeah. So we'd, we'd roughly want to keep those about, say, eight to 10 inches apart on the backswing, downswing, and follow through. So we have arms straight and elbows close would be the feel. Okay, so as like a checkpoint for someone then, the idea then is I'm trying to keep the butt of the club to me, in, at least in this part of the swing, feeling like that stays the same. And in order to do that, if I keep the elbows the same distance that I started with, that would help me accomplish Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Okay, okay. And for me to do that as I'm going in motion, the, the first thing we would start them with is, if they have an error, it's that the elbows are getting too far apart somewhere. So to fix the elbows getting too far apart, you have to feel like you squeeze them closer together. Yes, so there might be some tension. You might feel like there's a little bit more tension in your arms going back and going through. Okay, so kind of baseline concept number one, let's just hit one with that and then we'll pull the training aid in. Yeah. If you guys haven't heard us talk about this before, I'm setting up with them close with the elbow pits away. I'm feeling like they stay squeezed close together the whole way. Nice hit. Yeah, that would be a solid strike. Now, okay, Steve, let's kind of get to the point of this video, which yep. is, hey, I know that, Steve, you told me that. You're telling me that every month. Eric's telling me to keep my arm straight and I just can't figure it out. Yep. If someone sends me that message, which I've got before, I always say two things. Number one, let's put a training aid in there to help with your feel. Because you can learn a lot by doing something like this, mm -hmm. right? That forces you into it. Yep. And then number two, what body motion? So starting with the training aid, I know we've each tried a lot. I mean, yep. I've tried several different. It's a great one. Yeah, ball between your arms. Now, we have the Tor Striker Smart Ball. I love the Tor Striker Smart Ball. It's the one that I found to be the best. I don't care what ball you use. You can use whatever ball you want to use. I just have found the size, the durability, the price point of this one makes the most sense to me. I agree. I've tried some that have the little ridges in the side. I personally don't like them as much. I like this size. Tor Striker Smart Ball, whatever kind of ball you want. And when we put this in, like I like to put this just underneath the elbows. Yes. To start with, you like that? Yep. So I'm kind of right in here. Yep. Just and, under the creases and like the, um, in the pockets of your arms. Okay. Even or just under it. And the whole point of this, which I think is obvious, but is to keep my elbows together, mm -hmm. right? So if I feel like I'm trying to squeeze them together, I'm unable to do it. Let me start with this to start to get a feel. Definitely. And what do we like here, Steve, if someone's starting with this, am I starting with hitting? Oh, I'm hitting, I'm hitting 50%. And I'm, if, if you have a grass driving range, I would try to take divots every time. So okay. I'd be trying to hit the ground. And if not, then you have a mat, just try to hit the mat. And the more that you keep making these little swings and doing what you're doing, um, each time you hit the ground, you're telling your brain something. So you're, you're learning and getting positive feedback with having the training in, in there and continue to keep touching the ground. Okay. So if you're, like we said earlier, if you're touching the ground, if the club's hitting the ground, we know that your arms are staying stretched out and that radius is staying like locked in. So I got the ball in. Yeah, I'll just pop it out. Do exactly what you just did in your practice. Okay, a little swings. half ones hit the ground. Yeah. Perfect. That would be, that's like ideal how to practice it. Okay. And, and then you just keep cranking on the speed, but that's like the basic structure and the, and the basic form of, um, of your shot. And I like this, Steve, and if we're working with someone, I always like to, to similar, do this as like, how much weight would I put on the bar if I was working out? You should put how much weight on as you can do with good technique. I, right? That's you well like that? said, yeah, okay. that's a pretty good one. So with the training aid, it's always like, hey, what swing length speed, whatever, as uh, however much weight you can do and not a pound more. So in the beginning right now, for me, that feels about appropriate. If you're having a hard time doing this, start hip high, hip high with the ball in or could, shorter. You could take your sand wedge, take yeah. your sand wedge and hit 30 yard shots. Start short. Yeah. Cause you're just, just the bar. Right. And then once that feels easy to do, then test more weight, go up a little bit longer, faster. If it breaks down, go back down. Correct. If not, it goes back up and just give yourself time to be able to own that. Yeah. Right. Like what if it took 12 months? I don't want to go on a tangent here, but just as I frame this, if it took 12 months to be able to like learn and own this, right? That's only one year away and you fix something you probably had an issue with for a, a, a long, long, time. long time. If you just do it slow and steady. So part number one, if you have a hard time doing it, throw a training aid in. We use the Tor Striker ball. Steve and I were also talking off camera. One of the things I use a ton for this as well is just a range bucket. Yep. So if you want to pop a range bucket between your sternum, not about my mic here, but essentially it's the same thing. I'm squeezing it together with my biceps. Mm -hmm. It would help me feel the same exact 
same and exact once again, pieces. always hit the ground, hit the when, ground when you're doing that. Okay, so I, I need to remind myself that when I'm doing that as well, hit the ground with it. Now, let's say someone sent me that email, Eric, you're, I hate your videos, my, I try to do my elbows together, they don't still work, and I give them that, yeah. and they're still not able to feel it, right? Then I would look to say like, okay, odds are at this point, you're, there's probably your body motions, probably something else going on that's, that's Absolutely. not allowing it, right? Absolutely. So let's give them a little review, Steve, of like, what could they do? And I'll just use the torch striker for this. What could they do? Uh, what would they do with their body that would hold them back from keeping their arms straight? Let's, let's do it that way. Okay. So what could I do that would not allow me to keep my arms straight at any point on the way back or through? I would start with the, the body being in flexion. And okay. more specifically, we, we'll start, let's go with the ground up, start with the pelvis first. Okay. So when you'd be coming through the ball, right, Ed, just make your swing, do it poorly. Your hips would be back, and then that would start making your upper body head be forward. See how you're bent forward in flexion. Yep. And when your body stays in flexion, that also would inhibit the arms to start flexing as well. And as, a, as an experiment for you to try this too, if I make a swing, because that's really good for me to even just feel, yep. try, keep, try keeping your arms straight, keep your hips back and get your head going forward and see how long you can keep them straight for. I could probably do it till about here-ish at most, which I wouldn't do at speed. And then I ha they have to bend from there. Now, if you do the same thing, start extending, I can keep my arm straight for a lo forever. much longer period of time. Yeah. And so the forward bend versus the extension. Now, does that apply to both? Absolutely. But yeah. I would say if, you know, for, for doing like a drill, I would go right away to the follow through. And the reason I would say that first is when you start doing your follow through, right? Like when you just did that right there, do you feel like how stretched out you are? Yes. Feel your body stretched out. There's some tension in your forearms. It feels tight. That sensation that you start to feel in the follow through, you'll slowly start building that in on the backswing as well. You'll okay. have that same sensation. So for me to be able to do this step one, if I'm a golfer, I'm struggling with it, start with the extension piece. Yep. Okay, hips forward, head back with the extension. So and let's- once again, And once again, as you're doing that, make sure you're always hitting the ground. Perfect. Okay. So I'm feeling like my, I feel like my hips are pushing forward and up and my head's kind of staying back where the ball line is. It feels like your head's staying back. It's really just staying in the same spot. Right. Definitely would feel like it's going If backwards. I'm the golfer who goes this yes, way. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so add the, make sure you're doing the extension. And, and that extension with your body helps to facilitate your arms being extended coming through the hit. Okay. Okay, let's nice say step. I've got that in there or yep. I'm thinking about that. What else might they be doing with the body that would hold them back from keeping the arms straight? So the, if I'm the, a, the, the legs, the legs also could be uh, too flexed coming through the ball. You might need to start straightening your straightening legs. legs. So like one of the things I see a lot, Steve, with the golfers is, is I'll just say no turn, which is like if I were to go here and we'll just use the follow through example, if I, if, or on the way back, if I just keep my belt buckle and my shirt buttons at the target and I have no turn whatsoever, just for an exaggeration, there's a point in time where I'm not able to keep my, my elbows close. Like I have to have an adequate amount of just pure rotation on the extension, way back. Extension, you need to have extension and turn on both sides of the swing. And it's the extension and turn that help to facilitate the arm straight on both sides of the swing. Extension and turn, okay. So give me the 101 version of what I'm feeling there. I'm feeling like my body, as I have this in, I'm feeling like just maybe my belt buckle and shirt buttons are turning away from the target on the way and, back. And going, oh, if we're talking about the backswing and going up and kind of feeling up a little. The chest would be feeling like it's going up on the back swing. And then I'm just reversing that on the way through? Yes. Okay. So turning and extending would be like the two main body motions? Absolutely. Okay. So turning my body away from the target, chest up, turn towards it, chest up. Is that, would that be a simple yeah, version that, to start with? Be, that would be where I would begin, yeah, to, to start building it. And you hit the ground. Okay. Turn away, chest up, turn through, chest up. Got the ball between, and I'm hitting the ground. And that's a really nice one. Yeah, you you had that stretched out. And I think one of the things, Steve, is like, for me, when I do that correctly, when I do the body motions and I have adequate turn and extension, so away from the target chest up towards the target chest up, that feels easy to keep this in and the arms close together. A telltale sign that you're doing this correctly is what body motions make it feel easy to do this? Those would be correct. The body motions that make it feel difficult, likely not correct having too much forward bend on either side, right? And if my that, chest is down. that would down, be like the beginning part of flexing your arms. See it all the time. Yep. 
If I go forward bend chest down head away, my, my arms start bending. Same thing on the way through and a lack of turn. So I think that's pretty good, guys, the synopsis here. If you're trying to get the arms straight, you understand the elbows close concept and you need a little bit more help from that, A, use a training aid, get sufficient feedback, and B, make sure your body is working appropriately, rotation and extension. If you guys enjoyed that video, click that like button down below, leave a comment with any questions, we'll answer any questions on that. If you wanna see Steve for some in-person lessons, we'll put his info down there or send us a message. Um, we'll hook you up with Steve. If you wanna work with us online, go on golf.com. Thank you guys for watching.